Let's look at methane, CH4. Carbon has four electrons in its outer shell, and hydrogen is just one. So four single covalent bonds are formed. Now how do we determine the shape from this? If we look at the electrons, we have four pairs of bonding electrons. These electrons will repel each other equally, and so the bonds will space themselves out as far as possible. When the four pairs of bonding electrons are separated as far as possible, the molecule ends up in a tetrahedral arrangement, like this. Drawing a tetrahedral molecule in 2D, we first draw the carbon and then two of the bonds to the hydrogen, which are in the plane of the screen. We then need to draw a bond coming out of the screen towards us, and we do that with a solid wedge. That leaves the final bond that goes away from us towards the rear, and we draw that as a dashed wedge. In methane, all the bond angles are 109.5 degrees. Now let's look at ammonia, NH3. Ammonia has five electrons in the outer shell, and will form three covalent bonds with hydrogen as follows. The arrangement here is different to the previous example of methane, in that there are three pairs of bonding electrons and a lone pair of non-bonding electrons. The non-bonding electrons do, however, influence the shape of the molecule, since these repel the bonding electrons. As a result, the bonding and non-bonding electrons arrange themselves like this. However, when we allocate a shape to the molecule, we ignore the non-bonding electrons and just consider the arrangement of the atoms. As a result, the shape is pyramidal. An important point is the non-bonding lone pair of electrons have a greater repulsion on the bonding electrons, and so the bond angles in ammonia are smaller than the bond angles in methane. The effect of the repulsion of the lone pair leads to a reduction in the bond angle by 2.5 degrees, and so the bond angle in ammonia is 107 degrees. Now let's look at water, H2O. Oxygen has six electrons in the outer shell and forms two single covalent bonds with hydrogen. This results in two bonding pairs of electrons and two lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen that need to distribute themselves to minimize the repulsion of the light charges. The bonding and non-bonding electron pairs arrange themselves like this. This results in an arrangement of atoms like this. The shape is nonlinear or bent. Since there are now two pairs of non-bonding electrons, the repulsion of the bonding pairs is greater still, and so the bond angle is reduced to 104.5 degrees. One thing to note is that for every non-bonding pair of electrons that are present, the bond angle is reduced by 2.5 degrees. That is, with methane, no non-bonding electrons present, so the bond angles are 109.5 degrees. With ammonia, there is one pair of non-bonding electrons, so the bond angle is reduced by 2.5 degrees to 107 degrees. And with water, there are two pairs of non-bonding electrons, so the bond angle is reduced by 5 degrees to 104.5 degrees. Looking at hydrogen fluoride, a single covalent bond is formed. which results in an arrangement of electrons like this, and leads to a linear arrangement of the atoms. Sulfur hexafluoride is an interesting case. Sulfur has six electrons in its outer shell, and forms six single covalent bonds with fluorine. There are no lone pairs of electrons to consider, and so the bonding electron pairs arrange themselves to minimize the repulsion from each other. This results in an octahedral shape. In terms of a 2D representation of this, we draw fluorine atoms above and below sulfur in the plane of the screen, and then two fluorine atoms coming out of the screen as solid wedges, and two fluorines 
going away from us as dashed wedges. The bond angles are 90 degrees throughout. The final example we'll look at is boron trifluoride BF3. Three bonding pairs of electrons result with no lone pairs. This leads to a trigonal planar arrangement of the atoms, similar to a three-bladed propeller, with bond angles equal to 120 degrees. Note the spelling of trigonal planar. It is trigonal and not triagonal. 